I'm trying to explain where morality comes from. One of the things that we realize when just reflecting back over history is that, you know, well, look, nice guys don't always win. The, the, very, the very notion of what you mean by, say, a good person or a right action is something which is relative to a society at a time. When we describe a, a person as good, or when we describe a, an action as, as right, we need to realize that although the English language permits us to describe a person as good, that it's unclear as to what exactly that means. When we talk about something being good, we typically mean that it's good for a particular function. So when we talk about you know, a, a, a good hammer, we don't mean that it's just a, a, a good hammer, all things considered. What we mean is that it's good for the purpose of actually driving nails into wood. And likewise, when we describe a, a person as, as good, we need to have some sense in, in what we mean when we say you know, that, that a person is, is good. If we think about what the, the kind of role or the function of morality in society, morality gives us a set of principles or rules that we use to actually regulate our interactions and with, with other people. So game theory, although from a, from a much more rationalistic point of view, likewise gives us a set of um, principles of, that we can use to regulate our interactions with other people. Game theory is the study of interdependent decision problems. An interdependent decision problem occurs when you've got several people who face some kind of situation where the best thing for any one of them to do in that setting actually depends upon what everyone else does at the same time. That then explains why game theory is actually of, of great interest to uh, social science and, and also for the analysis of morality because in social science most of the kinds of problems and, and, and phenomena that arise occur when you've got groups of people interacting and the nature of the interactions are such that people are responding to what it is that other people do. What I'm suggesting is that morality plays a functional role in social life. The function of morality is to produce behaviors of a certain kind. Those behaviors are actually advantageous to the individual, not for the reasons that are, that are presented by morality. Uh, the behaviors aren't actually useful for the individual because they are you know, right or wrong, they promote the good, they are, they are beautiful, or they have other kinds of positive properties that morality endorses. What I'm saying is that the, re the real reason why we describe those actions as right or wrong is that those actions are utility maximizing over the long run. But that's not a useful way of actually producing behavior in people. The useful way of producing behavior in people is to, just, is to introduce this moral theory that gives us this language and this way of appraising actions. And that provides the motivation for acting in a certain way, which proves to be advantageous. One of the things that we realize when just reflecting back over history is that, you know, well, look, nice guys don't always win. Uh, it's not always the case that you end up having societies that are designed around what we would now consider to be, you know, acceptable moral principles. So, I mean, there was periods of time when, when uh, slave owning, uh, when owning slaves was permitted. Um, there are times when uh, sort of practices that we now find morally, you know, even more morally abhorrent were permitted like uh, human sacrifice or, or cannibalism. And so the, the idea is that when we think about what is a morally acceptable way of, of acting or behaving, what we mean by that is that given the, given the circumstances present in society, uh, given the beliefs that are that are spread throughout society, given the preferences that exist in people throughout society, that there is a set of behaviors that end up being uh, conducive towards you know, allowing people to satisfy their preferences to the greatest extent possible given the constraints placed by others. And if morality has the functional role that, that, I, that I suggest, then all it means to say that a person is good or that an action is right is that that action plays that role within that kind of society. So 
the, the, very, the very notion of what you mean by, say, a good person or a right action is something which is relative to a society at a time. It's very important to realize that it's possible for the, the notion of, of goodness or rightness to be relative to a society at a time, but yet for the notion of good or rightness to also be objective, how is that possible? Well, to say that the idea of a right action is relative means that you know, the, what actually counts as right is capable of varying over, over time. But it can be objective in the sense that given the set of preferences that people have, given the beliefs that they have, given the organization of society, there can in fact be an objectively best way for people to try to satisfy their preferences in that society at that time. And if what we mean by a right action is nothing more than a right action is one which serves to satisfy people's preferences you know, to the greatest extent possible in a society at a time, then it becomes possible to talk about an action being objectively right, but yet relative.